Hello and welcome back to Your Health Radio and Television Program. I'm your host from the Monterey County Public Health Department, Emily Shelto. I'm talking to you today about oral health and dental hygiene. Earlier we spoke with Dr. Paul Morris, pediatric dentist of Central Coast uh, Pediatric Dental Group, and learned about child oral health. Thanks again, Dr. Morris. I'd like to now introduce my next two guests, Dr. Harry Stewart Orsaki and Dr. Joe Mitchell of Joe Mitchell Orthodontics. Gentlemen, welcome to the program, and thanks so much again for being here. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So we'll jump right in again, and Dr. Osaki, I'll start with you. Um, can you tell us uh, a little bit about your practice and perhaps even how you two know each other? Well, we, um, I'm a general dentist, and I have a practice in Salinas and Monterey. We see uh, patients of all ages and provide a full, um, all the dental uh, uh, procedures, including implants and uh, cosmetic dentistry and uh, Dr. Mitchell practices uh, right next to me uh, in Salinas. Okay, so hence the nice little friendship. Right, we've known each other for quite a while. Oh great. So um, Dr. Osaki, what questions do patients commonly ask you? Well nowadays um, uh, a big uh, question is about implants and uh, um, uh, implants originally started in the 60s and the purpose was to uh, restore edentulous or patients with no teeth. And, uh, but nowadays, uh, in my practice at least, we mostly, uh, the main implant restorations we do uh, is mostly like single tooth or two teeth. And so it's uh, basically a crown uh, with an implant holding it into the jawbone. And so when you think of an implant crown, it's really a two component system. The implant, uh, you think of as the root and uh, uh, the crown is like the, the natural crown of a tooth. And so the surgeon will place the implant into the jawbone and usually you have to wait several months for the implant to, uh, in, we call it integrate or solidify in the jawbone. If you put it in too, if you restore it too soon, uh, the implant won't be strong enough. Hmm. And then the crown, uh, the patients will come to, to my office or the general dentist's office and we'll place the crown. The crown, we try and uh, uh, match size, shape, color, so that uh, it blends in perfectly with the rest of the mouth. Okay. And uh, it's a, uh, um, uh, patients comment that it feels just natural. Really? Just natural, yes. I'm sure not the, uh, when they put in the implant, it doesn't feel too natural, does it? No, but actually they <laughs> say it's, it's uh, uh, I've had many patients who are worried about it, and they say it's, uh, it wasn't that bad. And the worries were, were uh, was unwarranted. Oh, that's good, because they're looking and at their nice, beautiful new smile, probably. Oh, it's, yeah, it's great, especially when it's in the front. And there's so many advantages with the implant crowns. The, the implant, the main advantage is that when the tooth is extracted, the bone starts shrinking away. And uh, uh, but with an implant, the body thinks, oh, there's a tooth here, and the, bon the bone stays strong and healthy. Another advantage of an implant crown is that it's a self-contained unit. Uh, it doesn't affect the neighboring teeth. So. Uh, you don't have to drill on the neighboring teeth like you would if you did a bridge or something like that. Okay. Yeah, so you keep the strength and integrity of the neighboring teeth. Excellent. And uh, Only one tooth needs the little makeover there. Right. No, none others. And then the, um, uh, it's uh, uh, with implants, uh, you can also use, uh, use it for other functions like um, supporting the dentures, like I mentioned. And also, I think they use them in orthodontics. Okay, and um, other than implants, anything else in cosmetic dentistry, anything else, any other common questions that you get from your patients? Well, um, you know, everyone wants a nice smile, and uh, so we're doing a lot of cosmetic dentistry. But cosmetic dentistry is really a general term. It's uh, uh, some of the procedures in cosmetic dentistry are like uh, uh, bonding, veneers, uh, crowns, um, whitening and uh, orthodontics. So when a patient comes in uh, and they went, I guess, cosmetic dentistry, I think uh, uh, 
we determine what's, uh, what they might like. And we determine, we do an exam and we see, uh, oh, do they have crooked teeth? Well, the first thing we would do, even though we could do it with crowns, we could straighten them out, we would rather uh, have them have an orthodontic consult because if they straighten the teeth out, then they're fixed permanently and we haven't altered the teeth. So I'm sure you have a good referral for that orthodontic consult. Oh, an excellent referral. <laughs> And then what, what kind of, to kind of transition from what, pa what patients commonly ask you, we mentioned in the last segment some, some things and action items for parents to be, um, you know, looking out for and concerned with and have in the back of their mind when it comes to their child's uh, oral dental health. Do parents um, have, any, have any concerns or common questions, you know, for, for their children, young children that you hear often? Or? Um. Well, like in adolescents, uh, we see a lot of teenagers, and uh, um, uh, uh, this wasn't the case several years ago, but we see a lot of uh, piercings. Huh. Yeah, so uh, uh, sometimes the parents are worried about the, like, uh, the what kind piercing. of damaging effects they could have. And so like um, most of the piercings in the mouth are on the lip and tongue. Actually, they could be in other places, but uh, thankfully, it's in some place uh, close to the outside. That'll be another program. Yeah, I think so. But uh, 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 they can cause extensive damage. Uh, the, pure, the little barbell that's on the lip and the tongue can uh, chip, fracture teeth, and even uh, damage teeth so much that there's nerve involvement. Oh. Yeah. And then. Uh, uh, they can also damage the gum, cause recession, bone loss. So really it can cause extensive and expensive damage. And, and this is as short as a year. Wow. You know? So we recommend maybe the plastic barbell is probably not as, uh, not what the kids want, but. Uh, well, you do also get a scar, and you know That's maybe right. it'll be forty-five dollars special for you know one piercing here and then another yeah. one there. But you could, could lead to, from what you're saying, you know, much more much in damages, more. even up to the thousands or hundreds. Yeah, and well, when you count it over the lifetime of the patient, it could, it could become thousands. Easily thousands, then. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's good to know. I think I'm over, you know, that age anyway. <laughs> no piercings for me. What kind of things? Um, what kind of things can you do to take care of your of your oral health? You mentioned um, that you know. What if someone were to have some damage from a piercing, or or how would we you know keep away from any sort of bacterial infection infection like we heard about in the last segment? Or well, usually if you uh, 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 if they see their dentist regularly, uh, you know uh, they'll catch uh, some of the infections. But to treat the damage, um, if the patients are younger, we'd probably do some bonding. And with some of the materials now, it can look very natural. Uh, if they're older, you know, we might start thinking of veneers or crowns. With the uh, gingival recession or the uh, uh, periodontal uh, injury, uh, they probably see a periodontist and they might be able to graft it. But sometimes the damage is so severe that uh, they might even lose the teeth and uh, resulting in maybe an implant, a bridge, uh, something to restore the area. Very well. So to kind of incorporate the orthodontics into the discussion, um, Dr. Mitchell, can you maybe first tell us a little bit about what orthodontic treatments can do for folks in need? Um, and maybe even touch on what Dr. Osaki mentioned um, about caring for your oral health and the importance of good oral hygiene. Well. Um, one of the things that I work with Dr. Osaki on is replacing missing teeth. He talked about implants, and certainly it's a wonderful uh, value. Sometimes you don't have an absolute ideal situation in order to place that implant, and that's where I can come in by um, moving the teeth into a better position so that they have a, an ideal situation. It makes his job a lot easier and overall the outcome much, much nicer. So we can help him there. Also correcting the bite um, to make sure that when you have this implant and you have a new restorations, that they're gonna be healthy and they're gonna last because the teeth fit together the way that they're supposed to. Right, so you kind of line things up for uh, the, the dentist to come in and, and you know continue with the procedure with whatever is, is necessary at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Oh, I yeah. see now. 
So, um, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Um, what types of problems should be treated early? Um, and is there a best age to begin any sort of orthodontic treatment, or is it just as necessary? Well, as necessary, for sure. Um, there's no ideal age to treatment for treatment. Uh, the best age is when you need it. And whenever the, pro the uh, problem is recognized is a good time to treat. If you had to pick a number, the American Association of Orthodontists says seven is probably a good time to treat. It's a time where the front teeth are in, in, in those cases, and at that time you can get a pretty good idea of whether there's going to be crowding. You can also get a good idea of how the bite is developing and how the overall um, jaws are developing. And it's also a good time to treat some problems. Uh, we don't treat every seven-year-old who comes in the office, but certainly if there's severe crowding, it's a great time to take care of that, get them back on track, create room for the new teeth that are going to be coming in, because at seven, there's still 16 new teeth that are going to be coming in. And if we can create an environment where those teeth have a chance of coming in straight, uh, it's a great value. Um, the other thing we'd like to take care of early are bite problems, um, big overbite or an underbite. Uh, if the top teeth are reaching out too far, it's just an accident waiting to happen. Uh, also, cosmetically, it's certainly a, an issue. And if you don't think seven and eight and nine-year-olds are concerned about their appearance, you got another thing coming because they really are. And it's something that uh, is important for their overall development of good self-esteem. So if we can help get their bite corrected, it's going to make them feel better. Plus, it's also going to give them a healthier environment um, to live in. Um, the other thing that we like to take care of are habits. Um, you get someone who comes in who's got a long-standing thumb habit or even pacifiers, and we've got patients who are still sucking their thumbs late teens and, and into adulthood. Oh, goodness. Um, and we don't have magic cures for that, but we have been successful in helping them to recognize the problem and give them some tricks to help get over that. So those three basic areas. Very interesting. So, uh, you know, I could have reframed my question to say, what age would you, you know, not treat before? Because it seems as though in the last segment we talked about, would you, or, you know, do you go ahead and, and, and fill a cavity or treat a cavity in someone who's um, having, has mostly baby teeth and the tooth is going to fall out anyway? So, you know, you wouldn't want to probably um, have any heavy orthodontic treatments before age seven because the mouth is still shifting and developing, correct? Right. Um, and that brings up another point. Actually, Dr. Morris talked about the value of early checkups and, and regular dental care. It really is important because one of the consequences of not taking good care of your teeth is you lose those baby teeth early. And losing the baby teeth early, they're really space holders for the permanent teeth. If you lose it, you lose the space holder and now you find out that there's not enough room, and that can create problems that didn't have to happen. So regular dental care, regular checkups, routine care is going to be valuable not only for the health of the teeth, but perhaps avoiding orthodontic problems later on. Right, and as you mentioned too, the overall perhaps even mental health of, of, of the child and the developing you know, adolescent. That, that can't be discounted. It really can't. Image is everything, is it's it not? <laughs> it's very important. So, um, why are adults coming to see orth uh, an orthodontist these days? And is, is there an upper age limit um, for orthodontic care? Well, there really isn't an upper age limit. As long as you've got teeth and they're healthy, we can, have, we can help. Um, my oldest patient to date is 88, and that's when she started care. She's 95 now. She's not still in braces, but she's 95 <laughs> now, and she's enjoying a smile, and she's hoping to have that great smile well past that. So there's no upper age limit as, all, as long as you've got um, healthy teeth to work with. Why they're coming? Because they want to look good, they want to feel good, they want to feel good about themselves. Uh, so they're coming to, to look better. That's one of the reasons for sure. And of course they're coming for bite-related problems and restorative things, things that Dr. Osaki is working with. They're coming uh, for help in conjunction with the restorative dentistry. And, and that's what I'm assuming, it sounds like that's what's kind of new in orthodontics. I've heard about Invisalign, um, Dr. Osaki mentioned a handful of cosmetic procedures or, or you know, reasons to, to seek cosmetic um, dentistry. What else is new? What, what is this whole Invisalign business about? Well, Invisalign is certainly a, a new part of um, the changes in, in orthodontics. Orthodontics is changing probably three different areas, I would say. Uh, one is comfort. Um, braces are no longer the braces you remember, the braces your parents had or the braces your older brothers and sisters had. Uh, in the last five or ten years, the braces have gotten smaller, smoother, more comfortable, less noticeable. Um, so there, there's definitely a comfort factor. They're also much more efficient. We're doing things now in less time than we did before. We're doing them in fewer visits than we did before. 
We're doing them in shorter chair time than we did before. And that's helping because it means less time out of school, less time out of business, out of your job, out of your life. Um, so definitely much more efficient. And we're getting better results too. And of course, um, we're seeing that they, they look better too. Um, the races aren't silver anymore. Of course, if you're a teenage or, or a, a young adolescent, um, having braces that show and are colorful and decorated, that's a big deal. And so we certainly have that available. But um, the, the adults and older teens sometimes don't want to have braces that look like braces. So for them, there's tooth colored braces that really almost don't show at all. And then you mentioned Invisalign, and that really is probably um, the latest and newest way of straightening teeth without braces. Um, how Invisalign works, it's, it's a series of clear plastic aligners, very much like bleaching trees if you have any experience with those. Mm -hmm. They're completely crystal clear, they're thin, they're comfortable, and they fit over the teeth. And the way that it works is the, um, the, the, the impressions are made of the teeth, and then from those are constructed these clear aligners. And it's a series of these that gently over time will straighten your teeth. Not for everyone, not for every case, but when it's appropriate, wonderful way of taking care of crooked teeth. And you mentioned the, the tooth colored braces. Now are right. those still the, the wire type of ones that we, you know, we often think of when we, when we think of braces or are those you know, some other technology that's, that's there? It's, it's very similar, but instead of being made out of stainless steel, they're made out of ceramics. So they work the same as the other braces, you just can't see them. Wow, wow. I, I feel like I need to find an excuse <laughs> now to go get some orthodontic and dental work done because of all those benefits you just mentioned. The technology. I'm sure we'd be happy to see yeah. it. <laughs> it's improving, it's shorter chair time, less visits, and, and better the better results. results. It's probably Absolutely. the key there. Wow, well, thank you so much. You've, you've really uncovered a couple mysteries, at least, that I've had um, <laughs> about some, some dental issues and, and how these new um, cosmetic surgeries are, are, are working. Are they called surgeries or no? You want to call procedure or? Procedures. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to misinform anyone there. Um, so thank you so much again, gentlemen, for helping um, the audience to understand more about you know, proper oral, dental, oral health and for teaching the techniques that we need to practice to maintain, to maintain our oral health um, and informing us of these, new, of these new procedures that we can get in case things are you know, maybe a little less, less perfect than we'd like them to be. Um, but at this time, we're going to take a short break. So this is your health radio and television program. And don't go away. We'll be back in two minutes.